Now let us turn to Daniel 6 chapter. You see, the first verse says, It pleased King Darius to set over the kingdom a hundred and twenty princes, which should be over the whole kingdom, and over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was first. Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find none occasion nor fault. Then said these men, we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Then these presidents and princes assembled together to the king and said thus unto him, King Darius, live forever. All the presidents of the kingdom, the governors, the princes, the counselors, the captains have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm degree that whosoever shall ask a petition or any, of any god or man for thirty days, save of you, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, tenth verse, he went into his house, and his windows being open in his chamber toward Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. Truth cannot be bent. The living God cannot be compromised. You know, I see ordinary people. I always like to tell this. On one occasion, I saw my mother seated with somebody whom she was counseling who appeared to have it terrible countenance. So I had to pass that way. I quickly got past. I did not look in that direction because it was too horrible to look at that face. Then my mother called me. And she said, Joe, I want you to come and see this lady, see this woman, and hear what she has to say. Here was her wicked husband who had warned her not to pray to Jesus Christ. nor dare to go to the meeting like this. And he said, I will burn you. And this woman knew very well that her evil husband was as good as his threats. Notwithstanding, she went to the meeting, worshipped the Lord Jesus, and she came back. He pounced on her, seized her head, and thrust it into the live coals and the fire, and her face was burned. 
my dear friends, I who had been so disinclined to look in her direction, found those scars of hers to be exceedingly beautiful. She stayed true to the truth she knew. She did not renege or turn away from Jesus. Now that's the kind of people I constantly meet with. People who have to meet relentless foes. Foes who are not afraid to carry out their threats. But these men and women will not wilt nor fear. I wonder if that can be said of some of you. I'm sure some of you will stand. Blessed are you when you are persecuted for righteousness sake, Jesus said. Rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven. You know, my dear friends, some of us don't plan to go to heaven. We plan to go to hellfire. Don't let anybody do so. But if you plan to go to heaven, you will rejoice at persecutions. You won't be a compromiser. Uh, a Muslim lawyer, an older man, met me recently at one of my meetings. He regularly attends our meetings. His house is next door to the mosque. And he said, he said, oh, they are persecuting me and troubling me. But his wife having died, he expressed a desire to move to be with his daughters. But then I said to him, yes, but the Quran says that when you kill an unbeliever, it is a very meritorious act by which you will be rewarded in heaven. Now, nobody wants to say that. The Quran says that. And he said, yes, it does. You see, we say, oh, you know, Britain today is held hostage. I don't, I can't understand this. I believe in the freedom of speech and the freedom of thought. I believe in it. And I practice it in public places. If you can silence truth by the threat of violence, what kind of reasoning is yours? If it's only the threat of murder and violence that you seek to use as a weapon, let me tell you, my dear friends, is it not high time that we acknowledged that we have failed miserably to love the Muslim. 
to take the word of God to them that hate you. Love them that hate you. Bless them that curse you. And pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. Of course, I come from a heritage from my grandfather's time of persecution. When my grandfather was tied to a tree and beaten. But that did not change him. And now, folks, Daniel opened his windows. Does somebody, has somebody forbidden you that you should not be faithful to the Lord Jesus? Has somebody told you that you should not be caught praying? Another woman told me that she was lost in prayer. She had been bad. she had been subjected to great brutality by her husband. And uh, suddenly there was a metallic noise which startled her. And she looked. What was it? Here was the husband bent on killing her. And the knife had fallen out of his hands. Made no difference to that woman. She continued to follow the Lord. My dear people, here is Daniel. He opens his windows. Okay, the lion's den is waiting for me. That's fine, I'll take it. Rather than capitulate, my Lord will stand with me. You know, folks, we need to return to the Savior. We need to return to that basic principle of trusting him. Did any child of yours get a doubt in its mind that mother is not going to give me breakfast in the morning? I must go and fend for myself and pick some up from the garbage, the neighbor's garbage. Did ever your child, your son or daughter fall into such a state of distrust? Then why do we fall so easily? into fear, into spiritual palsy, as though God is going to abandon us and forsake us. No. And what a victory Daniel won. And the poor king, when Daniel, his favorite, president was cast into the den of thieves. This poor man could not sleep. The emperor could not sleep, but in the morning he came to the den and said, O oh, Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom you serve continually able to save you from the lion's mouth? He must have cocked his ears to say, am I going to hear any response to this? O oh, king, live forever. My God, whom I serve, sent his angel and shut the lion's mouth. 
Yes. We have to learn faith, my dear people, trusting in our almighty Savior. Sometimes when we say, sing these wonderful songs, almighty, victorious, thy great name we praise. Now, are we really meaning what we sing? Or is it just some kind of religious fervor that makes you sing a tune, not the words? Almighty. He, his name is Emmanuel. God with us. We need to prove him in all situations, in all ages. My whole life has been one of proving the faithfulness of God to a very unworthy person. And he will be faithful because he can't be otherwise. Let us pray. Let us tell God, Lord, give me and a true love for you. Faith that will not wilt or wither. Give me the grace to face the situation like Daniel faced it upon his knees, to bring a whole kingdom to heal, to show the power of the Almighty God to a kingdom full of idols and other gods and goddesses. Oh, Lord, have mercy on Britain, so full of other gods, so full of fanciful gods. When all kinds of people come out with all kinds of fads and fashions, and the musicians strut around as though they are, they are gods. O oh Lord, teach us to look at Jesus and learn of him. Give us faith. Gracious Father, you know how to lift us. Sometimes we appear to be unliftable. Lord, but notwithstanding, have compassion upon us and lift us, lift us. Precious Lord, there have been people who withstood Hitler to his face. There have been people who have reneged on Hitler's doctrines and paid the penalty in the last war. There have been people who have stood for the truth hitherto in Britain. And today, we ask you, good Lord, when there is so little faith in the land. And all our trust is in our old, cranky, rusty machinery. Worthless church machinery. Oh Lord, we pray and ask you that we might see you and not run to oil the crad, the rusty machinery. 
Father, give us faith. Give us to seek you with all our hearts. There's nobody to stop us when we go to our bedrooms and say, I'm not leaving this bedroom till Jesus speaks to me. There's nobody to stop us. Yet, we allow our urges, our little mobile phones, and every kind of other things to intrude and interrupt such that nothing is left sacred anymore in our relationships or in our families. Forgive us, Lord, and let us not be a compromising lot. Make us a people true to the truth, faithful and loyal to the Savior who shed his blood for us. So, Lord, give us the faith to declare you and demonstrate you to an unbelieving world. We ask this in Jesus' holy name. Amen.